police department should say corrupt administration. You have a corrupt police culture. The cover-ups that I just wanted to cover real quick, Trevon Cole, Costco, Gibson, Suave Lopez, uh, O.J. Simpson, Officer Kevin Daly, and can you read my own writing? Mr. Martinez, we're going to keep this. Okay. Those need to come out before you start feeling warm and fuzzy. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Mr. Moody? I'm going to use a little bit of my time to correct a misstatement made previously. To say that there was no, re no, no relationship at all with the people of West Las Vegas prior to just two years ago is completely incorrect, and it's a real disservice to people like um, Captain Gary Schofield, who started the Safe Village process in West Las Vegas uh, back in 2006. It is a real disservice to uh, uh, former Captain Kevin McMayville, who went on to build the foundation that is now the Sherman Gardens Project in West Las Vegas. Uh, listen, I've been involved in a lot of great and innovative programming at Metro throughout my career, but I've never done a single thing by myself. And most of what we do at Metro is build on foundation the first block is put in place by somebody else, and we come along and we add to it. Uh, so I want to correct that. Then, Brett, to answer your question, uh, we, what's happened at Metro is we've gotten away from an emphasis on service, and we've slipped and slided towards an over-reliance on statistics for the sake of statistics and numbers. you got an area captain. Uh, that's our neighborhood in charge of our neighborhood station that has to go running downtown every single week, week in and week out, with a stat sheet in his hand. And um, on that sheet is how many traffic stops, how many misdemeanor arrests, uh, how many uh, person stops. That trickles back down to the cops on the street. And that, without strong leadership and direction, the environment that's created in that causes these cops to go out the door confused. Uh, they're more worried about coming back to the station with the appropriate number of blocks, blocks checked on a form. They're more interested in bean counting. It's destroying, destroying their credibility. It is eroding the discretion of the frontline police officer. I'm going to put a stop to that day one I'm in that seat. Uh, that action process, as we call it every Tuesday, is done. And we'll go back and revisit the kind of message that we're sending to our uh, neighborhood commanders, because that trickles down through our lieutenants and sergeants and onto our cops. Thank you, Mr. Moody. Mr. Page? I wonder how many people that held up their hand feel the way they do because they had an encounter with a police officer, because they read it in the paper, or they saw something on television. Uh, I think sometimes, you know, did you really have a police officer mistreat you or mistreat something to you? Or did you read about what happened to Stanley Kitten, which really infuriated all of us? I would do a better job of trying to communicate and find out from the public what the problem is. One of the problems is, again, we have an enterprise where I am a patrol officer on Monday and Tuesday night, about 16 or 17 officers. We have 108 square miles. I can't really treat you the way you'd like to be treated if I come to your house on a call. I'm going to try to do the best I can to take care of your call and do all I can for you. But I may not be able to leave you feeling really good about everything because I didn't do everything you would like to have done. I did what had to be done because there's a, I looked at my computer and there's 10 more priority calls holding. Some nights there just isn't time. You know, but I would do all I could to reach out to the community and find out, is it from the newspaper, the television, or are we really the street? And if we are, we'll take care of that. Thank you, Mr. Page. Uh, Mr. Roman? Yes, to me, it's all about civility and respect. <clears throat> Some police officers do have civility and respect when they are involved with the citizens. <clears throat> Some don't. So some people get into a situation where they're involved with the police officers who not, do not respect citizens or treat them with civility. And uh, that works against all police officers. And I remember what, when we prepped, what you're talking about <clears throat> and, you know, being a child. I remember when I was a child, and my parents always told me that if I was uh, afraid or if I was um, confused or lost, that I should find a police officer. How many of our citizens do that now? How many? How many of our citizens listen to things that happen to, to others? How many of our children hear other adolescents, other children, other parents talk about experiences they've had with our police department and they have no respect for the police department? It's impossible. All police officers have to treat all citizens with civility and respect. And I would ensure that if I'm elected sheriff. Thank you, Mr. Rowland. 
and passion. Hi, this question is for all the candidates, and you may answer with a yes or no. There is an alliance between the television show Cops and the LV Metro Police Department, where at any given time of day, you can catch an episode filmed in Las Vegas where a prostitute or drug possession suspect, sometimes mentally unstable or with substance abuse problems, is placed in the handcuffs and arrested while the whole world gets to see them on what is probably the worst day of their lives. Do you support this alliance and will you continue to make a profit and secure campaign donations in exchange for embarrassing and ruining the lives of our neighbors and fellow citizens whom you swear an oath to defend? You know, you pose a good question. Uh, when that was initially, uh, in fact, I think I was like on the first show. Uh, it was an hour long oh, special. Me. Was it you? I, that was you. <laughs> you were about two years old. No wonder you're so nervous. Uh, but I will tell you this. Initially, yes no? uh, the concept. Yes or no? It's just yes or no. Um, you know, I, I, I think it needs to be looked at. But I'm going to be careful here because we talk about transparency and openness with our community. And I talk about partnerships. And you talk about a specific entity. But I wouldn't put a stop to having uh, reporters ride with us. I wouldn't put a stop to having, uh, uh, you know, there, there are some really compelling uh, pieces that come out of that. I think that's where that came from. Thank you. We'll, we'll go ahead and move on to Mr. Thank you, Mr. Well, that's a big uh, negative on allowing any of them in there. The fact is, I filed a complaint against the sheriff uh, because they use language productions and the cops show to boost his last uh, campaign so, in 2010. So it's a big no. Know. I won't. I won't allow it. It's a. It's. It's corrupted, and it's also Sorry. staged. By Thank the way, you. <clears throat> Mr. Rudy, is the question: Will you end the alliance? Yes. Yes, I will end the alliance. Okay. Thank you very much. Based on the way the question was phrased, no. Thank you, Mr. Page, Mr. Roman. And no, I would not support that continuum. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, Mr. Martin. Good afternoon. Um, Finding that we're running out of time to ask questions, I'm going to have to look through all the questions I have, and I hope I get to see all of you in the future and ask you more questions. But this one is kind of personal to me now because of Mr. Martinez's response. So first I'm going to make a statement, and then I'm going to ask a question. Mr. Martinez, I believe you were out of line in the statement that you made to Ms. Gibson. Okay, That's my personal belief. Because everybody has an opportunity to use morality in their decision-making process. And that young officer had the same opportunity and chose not to. So yes, there was fault. My question is, is Metro teaching morality to its officers to allow them to make decisions on their own and not only take direction of the upper ranks, which a lot of people feel are corrupt within the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department? Thank you, Mr. Martin. I'm going to let Mr. Martinez start. And please keep it succinct. I'm sorry you took my answer to mean that there was no fault. There was fault, and it was to that lieutenant, not to Aravello. Aravello, given the information that he got, acted properly. The lieutenant that came in there and gave them false information and conducted that operation the way he did is the cause of that horrible, horrible mistake. Yes, there's fault, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Moody. This is a tough one to be succinct about. Um, uh, I would argue that I probably know more about the details of that incident than anybody else in the room since my board heard 11 grueling hours of uh, testimony in front of our new Civilian Use of Force Review Board. Uh, the officer was wrong. The board made the right decision to recommend the termination of, of that officer. The board made the right decision to recommend the, demo the demotion of the lieutenant who was the commander at, the, at that scene. But it's not so much about morality. It's about, it's a question of what, what has the focus of our training and policing become nationally over the last 30, 35 years? And the focus of it is on a sort of street survival mentality, which has come to dominate uh, uh, formal police training throughout the United States. It's not just a problem at Metro. Uh, re realistic, innovative, scenario-based training that reflects actual conditions that officers face in the field is the beginning of peeling those layers back and changing how police officers think about responding to force incidents. We, we shouldn't be 
uh, the, the question and the, the dominant feature in training should never be, can we shoot this person? Are we shooting people because we can? Okay? Fine, Mr. Uh, deadly force should be a last resort. That has to be the focus of the Thank training. you, Mr. Moody. Mr. Page? If when you start as a police officer at over 21 years of age, you don't have any morality, we're in trouble. Morality is taught from the time we're born until we grow. I don't think the police department really should be teaching morality. I think it's something you should have, but they should be teaching you to use your brain to think before you act. But as far as, we all have a different view of what morality is. You know, we have police officers that, that steal, we have police officers that use drugs, we've had police officers that commit crimes. And they could have had all the training in the world. Morality failed them sometime along the way. And I don't mean it as a wrong to you, I'm just saying, I don't think the police department can teach morality. Thank they you. can teach other Thank you, Mr. Page. Mr. Roman? Yes, I believe that uh, anyone who aspires to be a police officer That's should have a minutes. vocation. It's not a religious vocation, but a service vocation. Uh, to be in the business of saving I'm lives, to be in the business of serving the public. And it's easy enough to find out. You do background checks, you interview people, the academy should be rigorous, it should be uh, separate the weak, and it should separate the poor performers. And the point is, in this regard, is that everybody who's sitting at this table, who's a member of Metro Management, knows exactly who those poor performing police officers are. And they need to take care of those poor performing police officers by holding them accountable and dismissing them from the force if necessary. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Burns. Yeah, I'll be quick this time. Yeah, you hire for it first of all. Uh, so the hiring practices, and we've gone through this a couple of times, uh, just in the three decades that I've been there, that we need to continually look at and improve our hiring practices to make sure that we're getting the very best because we still are hiring human beings. Do we teach it? Absolutely, and we continue to teach it. And I've got to tell you, I think we need to do a better job, both uh, in a classroom and by example. I was a lieutenant for a long time. I uh, was SWAT commander for uh, seven years, 300 plus hostage barricade situations I responded to, and I commanded in those situations. I'm not gonna tell you that it makes anything perfect, but I will tell you that in that period of time, thousands of search warrants and, and all those barricade hostage situations, never a lawsuit one filed against me for anything that I did or didn't do. Um, I, I think we do leave a legacy behind us. We look behind us like everything else on the boat. There's a weight behind you, uh, a legacy that you leave, and, and it is morality that you, uh, that you demonstrate. And I think all of us who have followed anybody in the battle anywhere, um, Time, if we Mr. Burns. that person, we follow. Time, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Burns. Um, and last, uh, our last two panelists, Tony Baca. How much time? Uh, just a couple of minutes. So. Actually, did, oh. did you ask a question already? Uh, no. To this panel? Okay, two uh, if you have a couple of minutes. Uh, go ahead. We got less than one minute. Uh, I got to rephrase that question because we only have a couple minutes. But um, <laughs> in light of all of us on the panel are against political correctness, I'm sure a lot of you are as well. And um, one of the areas that uh, people are having a real struggle with is the illegal immigrants in our community. Uh, about three years ago, I, I witnessed a video that showed um, the sheriff's department or the leaders in the sheriff's department telling their um, you know, police officers to stand down and look the other way when you basically, you know, there's a legal you know, such situation. So my question is, um, how, what is your... How will you direct your department to deal with uh, illegal immigrants uh, or illegal aliens in this country that, that you find? Let's start with uh, Ted Moody. Make it as short as possible, yeah. please. <laughs> well, yeah, you ask a question uh, as complex as that, and you want it all in a, in a very short answer. Well, I'll tell you this: uh, the 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 problem the problem of uh, undocumented migrant workers in the United States is far bigger than any local law enforcement agency. And it is, it is, it is both wrong and unrealistic to expect uh, local law enforcement agencies that have their hands full, trying to serve their communities and reduce crime, uh, are the solution to this problem. So, so is the answer, and would I ever uh, authorize the use of local law enforcement to go out and round up uh, undocumented migrant workers and, 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 and corral them someplace so they can be transported across the United, across the border. I, I know better. I ran that jail as part of my uh, responsibilities before I left. 
And even of those that are picked up for serious crimes and processed through our 287G partnership with the federal government removed from the United States, the recidivism rate would blow your mind. They're back in the United States, in many cases, within a few days. Next the government candidate, please. Not securing the border. Thank you. Let me just make a comment. I'm not saying to go, well, we need to go, the department needs to go around people out, but the ones that are in your face and, and that you have to deal with. Okay, do I get to answer again then? Since Negative. you changed the question? <laughs> Sorry. I think that that's a complex question that if folks want to meet and talk to them afterwards, we can do that. I have, a, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, we're really running out of time here, and I have a yes or no question I need you all to answer. Um, real quick, tell me, each of you, if you have heard of or are a part of the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association, and if elected as sheriff, would you take part in the Constitutional Sheriffs Convention? Start with Mr. Burns. Okay, you have two questions. Yes, no, yes. So, uh, yes, I've heard of it. No, I'm not a part. And yes, I'll participate. Thank you. Yes, I am part, and I'm one of the only that signed the resolution in Nevada against the NDAA. Yes or no, Mr. Martinez? Yeah. I am a part of it, and I will uh, have them yeah. work within the police department to teach officers about constitutional law. Thank you. Yes, I've heard of it. No, I'm not a signed up registered member of the organization. Yes, I'll attend their conventions. I have in the past. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Page. Yes, no, yes. Thank you. Mr. Roman. Uh, yes, I'm a constitutionalist and a believer in the Second Amendment, so I would join, yes. Thank you all very much. This was truly a wonderful <laughs> Thank you.